Hello everybody, this is Greg. I'm here today to talk about bicycle tires. It seems to be my favorite subject. It's also the number one problem on bicycles. It's the thing that goes bad the most. Um, I did a tire article a while back and um, it, it covered the most common things. Some of these things are a lot less common. We'll talk about those and we'll also talk about a little bit of tire maintenance. With that said, be sure to like and subscribe. And now that we got that out of the way, let's get started. I bought this rim to replace one that I crashed. I had a pretty good collision on, on my bicycle and I bent the front wheel up really bad. The only replacement rim I could find that, that looked like the back rim on my bike was this one. But my bike has Presta valves and this is a uh, Schrader rim actually. Schrader valves have a bigger diameter stem than, than this. So to make up the difference, you, you need to put these grommets in. Otherwise, you'll continually have flats from that because um, this has the valve stem has to fit in there reasonably well. That big eight millimeter hole that's on the Schrader rim is is quite a bit bigger than this. I can't remember the the diameter of uh, press the valve, but the difference is pretty big. So you buy these grommets and that takes care of that problem. And I have a link in the description for the grommets. Plastic rim strips like these can cause problems with some rims. When I had to replace my front rim, I was getting frequent flat tires on the new rim. The punctures in the tube are on the inside of the tube facing the rim. I tried a different plastic rim strip, but the results were the same. On the internet, I found other cyclists who had the same problem with punctures on the rim side of the tube. They solved this by removing the plastic rim strips and installing cloth rim strips. This solved the problem for me as well. Okay, these are available in different widths. And uh, this particular one, 16 millimeters, it's marked right on there and on the box. And the way you put them on, you start at the valve stem hole. get it all lined up and when you put them on you, you don't want them to um, interfere with the the bead of the tire and we just go around it's I think it's easier to go kind of long sections like that and stick it down it's not super sticky so um, it's not like if you put it down on the rim it's stuck forever so you have a little plenty of time to get it positioned um, anyway, just uh, work your way around. And there it is. Once you have it on, you just put your tire back on. Um, reinstall your tire and, and your tube, just like normal, and uh, you're ready to go. That, that'll end that um, punctures from those plastic rim strips. I don't know if they move side to side or what happens with them, but these don't. I love old twins like this one. These are the bikes I grew up with, and I think they have a very classy look. One thing to keep in mind if you're fixing up old twins is that some of the tire sizes are different. I recently wrote a blog post that includes a table of Schwinn specific tire sizes. I put a link to that post in the description below. As you can see, this 26 by 1 and 3 8 Schwinn tire is too big for this rim, even though it's a 26 by 1 and 3 8 rim. This rim was on an old Schwinn 3 speed I bought as a project bike. When I bought tires, I purchased ones that are made to fit older Schwinn wheels. The rear tire fits the rim perfectly. This front tire, not so much. At some time in the past, the front wheel on this bike was replaced with a standard 26 by 1 and 3 8 wheel. Lesson here for me was to never assume the rims on the bike are the same ones that came with the bike. If I would have looked at the size on the sidewall of the tires, I would have known they were different. Tires for older Schwinn's are still available. The link for those is in the description. When installing a tire, if you'll line up the tire inflation pressure information, it's molded in the sidewall of the tire 
with the valve stem, it makes the information easy to read. I ride several bikes with different sizes of tires and different inflation pressures. I find it very convenient to have the information in an easy to find location. Before I go riding, I usually um, hook my tire up to the my floor pump that has a gauge on it, and I pump it up to the correct pressure. That What I'm doing here is um, both checking the tire to see what the pres pressure is that's in it, and topping it off so that when I start my ride, I have a full tire. And there it is, a full tire. You should occasionally inspect tire tread and sidewalls for damage. This tire was filled to 100 PSI, and though it holds air just fine, you'd risk a blowout if you were to ride on it. I didn't notice this slice in this tire until after it was inflated. Okay, with the pump you'll be using on your bike, I have this um, frame-mounted pump here, older pump, but it still works good. Um, inflate your tires and, and uh, count how many pumps it takes to fill it up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nine, five, nine, six, nine, seven, nine, eight, nine, nine, and one hundred. So for me, it takes 100 uh, pumps to, to fill this tire to 100 PSI with that pump. I kind of cheated a little bit because I already knew how many pumps it would take, so that's all the more I did. I didn't check it in between. If you're going to use a CO2 inflator like this one, um, you want to empty it all the way in the tire. It, squeeze the trigger until it's completely empty, and that should give you about the right inflation pressure. Now this particular cartridge that's in this one, is a 16 gram, which normally gives me about 80 to 85 pounds of pressure in these tires. But you just, uh, and you should always do this at home before you ever use them. And that should be it. Since I already know how much pressure it takes and how full it'll fill it, um, that's all I'm going to do for that. Um, another thing about these is uh, they get very cold. So uh, this particular one has a cover that goes over it to protect your hands. But if, if you buy one that doesn't have that cover, um, you could take your old inner tube and wrap around the one so that so that your hands will be cold. That's extremely cold even still. And one last thing before we go. Um, I'd like to know your thoughts on using tire sealants like slime. Um, I'm a road rider primarily and I don't use anything like that. But I can see where it could be beneficial for like mountain bike riders. Um, let me know in the comments below. And be sure and like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.